I've been collecting vintage computers for a very long time, and one of the consequences of that, first of all, is that when I moved to the United States, I had to abandon most of my collection in Australia, and secondly, um, the collection that I have rebuilt here over the past uh, 18 years in the US, I've lost track of what a lot of it is. So today I was in my garage looking for something totally unrelated, and I came across a stack of classic Macs that I completely forgot that I ever had, although once I saw them I remembered acquiring them. And amongst them was this, which is a, I'm going to say, original Macintosh Plus. Um, there's a bit of an asterisk on that. First asterisk is the original Macintosh was not the Macintosh Plus. It was just Macintosh. It was the 512K version, and it had a um, single-sided 400K floppy drive. This model has a double-sided 800K floppy drive. It had different ROMs. Anybody that used uh, early Mac emulators will know what I'm talking about here. Um, it also supported only MFS, not HFS, and uh, it had, I believe, a different motherboard also. But that's not important right now. Uh, this is a very old, not the oldest, but a very old classic Mac, and it's a very nice piece of equipment. It's dirty, uh, and it's yellowed, as you would expect. There is a product, or perhaps I should call it a technique, called RetroBright, which can be used to bleach these old housings back to their original factory color, or something close to it. I don't intend to do that because I actually like the kind of vintage yellowed look of this. Um, but let's see what we have here and talk about what I intend to do with it. First of all, I'm not going to damage, cut, glue, drill, or otherwise modify this piece of plastic in any way if I can possibly avoid it. Secondly, all the electronics that are in it I'm going to take out and I will donate to anybody that wants to use them to restore a Mac of the same vintage because when I last powered this up it was working perfectly. Now, I trash-picked this, and by the way, this is the reason why I picked this machine out of all the ones in the pile. I trash-picked this when I lived in New York. I was walking past a real estate office one trash day, and this was out with all the other garbage, and it was probably have been about, you know, 2005 or thereabouts, so it was a very old machine, probably hadn't been used in a long time even then. But it didn't have any peripherals with it, and that is a problem because... The old Macs used this proprietary RJ11 connector for the keyboard, and they also had a proprietary 9-pin D connector for the mouse. That is not a serial port for a mouse, that is a proprietary port. And as a matter of interest, that 21-pin connector there is for an external floppy drive, and that 25-pin connector is for an external SCSI hard drive, and also some scanners connected there. These two mini DINs are the serial ports. You see one is labeled for modem, one is labeled for printer. Didn't really matter because all Mac software that I remember from the era let you pick which serial port you wanted to talk to, be it printing or uh, terminal emulation. Since we're on the back of this, you'll see there's also a sticker that says 2.5 megabytes, which means this has been upgraded. If I recall correctly, and it's been more than 10 years since I was inside one of these machines, this machine had four 30-pin SIM slots and it originally shipped with four 256K SIMs for the one megabyte as advertised. So this has probably got two one meg SIMs and two 256Ks probably left over from the factory. Um, behind this hatch is the parameter RAM battery, PRAM battery. Uh, amazingly, there is no sign of leakage or damage there. It's quite incredible really. The uh, inside of the housing says use EverReady number 523, 4.5 volts or equivalent. Um, I don't even know if that battery is sold anymore. Oh, you'll notice there's a torque screw here, and another torque screw here, another torque screw here. Those are all fine and dandy. The annoying screws on this particular computer, and let me just put that back so I don't lose it. The annoying screws are right up under here. There are two Torx screws under this handle, which uh, require a very long Torx driver that can reach all the way up there. Uh, I Back in the 80s, I had a flathead screwdriver that I had filed down so that it would engage these screws just enough to be able to pull them out so that I could replace them with regular Phillips head. Uh, I don't know exactly how I'm going to get these ones out. I don't have an extra long Torx driver, but I'll figure something out. So what's inside here anyway? There is a main logic board, which is on the bottom of the computer and is kind of occupies the whole footprint. That has the 68,000 video circuitry, or I should say video generation circuitry, the RAM, uh, floppy controller, all the rest of it, all lives on that main motherboard, if you like. The Mac 
original Mac and the Mac Plus were not very expandable. They didn't have an expansion bus connector on them. The later models all did have one or other, what Apple called a processor direct slot, uh, which would let you plug in one expansion card for Ethernet or something like that. But anyway, these ones don't have anything like that. Your uh, networking option is basically Apple Talk over Serial, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, sure, there were some third-party things, but Apple Talk was basically it. Uh, there is a power supply board here, which, besides providing the low voltages that are required to run the digital side of things, also provides the uh, voltages required to run the CRT. So the flyback transformer, again, from 10 years ago memory, the flyback transformer is also on this vertical board and connected to the CRT. Uh, another interesting thing about this housing is that this and its predecessor model, as I said, I believe used the same molds, which means on the inside of this housing, the signatures of the original developers are all embossed in. Uh, it's a nice kind of... Uh, uh, vintage touch, not really seen very much anymore. Uh, this is the special Sony 800K double-sided uh, motorized eject floppy Apple special, of course, because Apple had to be special. Everything about it is special, special, special. Uh, the CRT is a monochrome paper white, very nice, um, pleasant on the eyes, uh, 512 by 384 resolution, if I recall correctly. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to take all the electronics out and donate them, as I said. I am going to replace the CRT with a small LCD monitor. And the way I'm going to do that is as follows. The CRT has a metal band around the edge of the tube, which has four ears that stick out at the corners. Those ears have holes in them, and there are screw bosses inside this piece of plastic. So there are screws that come through those holes in the ears and hold the CRT to this front part of the computer here. Uh, when you take these screws out, it's the back part that comes off with nothing attached to it. Everything's attached to the bottom and front of this particular piece of uh, this bit, uh, housing. So I'm going to take a uh, piece of black uh, ABS or something like that, and cut it to size, screw it to those same screw bosses, cut a hole in it for a monitor. So I'm going to look for a small 8 or 9 inch monitor. I will try to find a 4 to 3 aspect ratio monitor because um, although it won't be displaying anything particularly important, I would like to have a monitor that matches this aspect ratio rather than having some tiny little 16 to 9 uh, letterbox thing in there. And inside it, I am going to put at least two 8 terabyte hard drives and some kind of computing platform to control them. It will probably be an Atom based motherboard. Uh, but really, all I'm looking for here is something that has at least two or preferably four SATA ports so that I can connect directly to hard drives and not have to mess about with USB to SATA adapters and that sort of thing. And there are many, many options there. Um, I mean, I could actually do it with USB adapters and a Raspberry Pi, uh, but that would kind of suck performance-wise when I'm copying large files around, so I would rather have something that connects direct over SATA. Uh, and there, again, there are plenty of options there. What to do about connectivity is an interesting question because when I take the electronics out, this is going to be an empty hole. These are all going to be empty holes. Probably what I will do is have a captive AC cable coming into this and have the power supply, like an open frame power supply, mounted somewhere inside here. There is a metal sub chassis inside this, which uh, some of the internal components mount to. I will try to keep that metal sub, uh, sub chassis because it's very handy for uh, you know being a mounting point for other equipment that I want to put in there. But all in all it's going to be a really fun project. I really enjoyed working with these machines. Um, I was at high school at the time and uh, the school I went to for years 7 through 9 had a very large computer facility for the students. Bottom floor was all Apple II's, mostly 2E's, some 2C's, and that was what our, us young kids got to play with. And then upstairs, they had some Macs and some Mac Pluses, and the Macs, the Macs that weren't Pluses had been pretty much upgraded. They'd had ROM upgrades, and they'd had the uh, extra RAM put in them, so they were essentially the same as this machine, just in the older, older labeling. Um, I also seem to recall that the old Macs were a yellower color and the uh, Mac Pluses were grayer, but that might just have been a question of age and sun exposure. Hard to tell. But anyway, it was always a big treat to go up there and play around with uh, you know, the paint packages and the word processing packages with all the fonts, which you didn't really have on the Apple IIc, at least not in the word processing packages they gave us. 
and uh, to play Dark Castle once in a while. That was a lot of fun. And of course, these machines had sound, real sound, sampled sound, which the uh, Apple IIcs didn't to any significant degree. But anyway, this is going to be a fun little project, and uh, I promise that no vintage computers will be unduly harmed during the production of it. And if you need uh, replacement hardware for restoring a machine of this vintage, uh, drop me a line and I'll see where, depending on where you are, I may just send it to you.